Hi everyone, this is Evans Nicholson from Technical Marketing at ServiceNow. Today I'm going to talk to you about what's new for ITOM in the area of cloud configuration and governance. So what do we mean when we say governance? For today's Cloud Center of Excellence teams, cloud governance means addressing questions like these. Are resources in the cloud actually being used? What are we paying for? And are the resources in the cloud configured and deployed per the norms established at the corporate level? So what are your standards? What's your company's standards for deploying cloud assets? One important thing to remember is that misconfigurations can cause data leakage. And then can you easily remediate configuration or misconfigured cloud resources when you find violations? So let's go to the demo and I'll show you how, with the help of ITOM Cloud Configuration Governance, these challenges can be addressed directly from the ServiceNow platform. So we're looking at the Cloud Configuration Dashboard. We've got some speedometers up here, but this is not speed, this is actually percentage. This, these are violations. So what this means is 16% of my AWS footprint is compliant. So that's pretty bad. <laughs> we need to do some work there. And 81% over on Azure, 81% compliance for all the assets or all the cloud resources that we're checking. And I'll talk a little bit in a minute about what those resources are. So let's look down here. What's going on with AWS? What are the violating resources? Looks like a lot of VMs of medium criticality. So you've got your criticality colors there. Uh, and then what, what are the resources that are violating those policies? So let's look at the drill down pane and we'll talk a little bit more about the objects. So what we're looking at is virtual machines, object storage, or IAM, and that stands for Identity Access Management. Currently with cloud configuration governance, these are the main objects that we're looking for and we're reporting on and designing policies around. So what we're looking at below are the actual policies. So it looks like we have 36 VMs that are missing from the CMDB, and this is based on a policy that we ran. So this is a violation of this policy. If I go down to this one, hardware type, non-compliant, AWS, and then this last one, long-running non-production VM. So 11 VMs we found violate this policy, long-running non-production VMs. And here's a list of our policies. Now remember, this is, not, this is not all you get. This is a framework on which you can build more policies and you can design based on your needs, right? So it's flexible and it's customizable. And I'll show you a little bit about that with this first example. So in our case, we had a problem with some VMs that were long running non-production VMs. So they're not, they're dev, test, UAT, right? And they're running, we don't know if we need them anymore. Is it a waste of money? Is somebody using this? We're not sure. So we designed this policy to check for that. So let's go back to the policy list. Let's check out this one that actually is out of the box, AWS S3 Enforce Bucket Encryption. This simply goes out and checks for AWS S3 buckets that are not encrypted, as the name implies, right? But this is important because if you have sensitive information in the cloud, it's not encrypted, you're at risk, okay? Nobody wants risk these days. And that's a big fear, actually, of migrating things to the cloud is this risk factor. A lot of people don't understand that. And if you can show through these reports that you're compliant in this way, it helps ease people's minds a little bit. Another thing you can do from here, of course, you can create policies, but we need to test them, right, before we actually let these loose. So this is the way you test it. You go in and you can find a scanned run that has already occurred. Normally the way this, ha I'm just gonna pick this top one, but normally the way this happens is these policies are assigned to a policy set and those sets are scheduled as tasks and they run automatically and they populate those dashboards that we saw at the beginning of the demo. So what I've done now is just, I've checked this policy against a previously run scan. And it is working because what we're seeing is a bunch of S3 buckets that are not encrypted. So how do we fix that? This is a report, this is great, but let's close the loop. Let's fix the issue. You can do that by selecting any of these rows and you can hit remediate. I'm not gonna do that because this is not my environment. I don't wanna lock somebody out of their bucket, but that's how you do it. I love the fact that you can close the loop and fix the issue. We're not just showing you a bunch of reports, things that are broken that you need to go fix somewhere else. We're doing it all from the single system of record, ServiceNow. All right, let's go back and go back one more. And again, so we're back to the compliance list. Now let's go to the remediations tab and let's look at some of these things we fixed. We saw a little bit about how we would address an S3 bucket non-encrypted. We can see you know, some reports on that here. And then hardware type, looks like on the Azure side, there were some hardware types that were not compliant. Monitoring state, VM probably wasn't being monitored, so we fixed those. And then probably my favorite, the bottom, 
how, how quickly were these remediated? This is really important for those metrics, those SLAs that your team may have. And if the, assuming these numbers are good, this is something you could share with your boss's boss's boss. But in all seriousness, it is good to know how quickly your team can react to issues that, have, that we found. And this is, this is how you see it right here. So speaking of reporting, let's go to trends. This is a great way to look at the big picture. You know, how many violations did we find? Uh, or is, it, is it getting better or worse? In our case, it looks like it might be getting a little worse over here. But we did pretty good here, a dip down around the 22nd. So this is a nice way to visualize policy compliance for your cloud items, your cloud environments. This concludes our quick demo of cloud configuration governance. And so let's recap. Remember, this is not just a static set of policies, but it is a platform. It's flexible, it's extensible, and you can build more policies as you see fit moving forward. Your Cloud Center of Excellence teams, when they establish new standards, they can create new policies and enforce those standards. Another benefit is you get a powerful set of tools to track violations on your cloud environments. This can help you identify unused resources as well as discover security vulnerabilities in the public cloud. And then when we find issues, we find violations, we can remediate them directly from the ServiceNow platform. For more information on all things ITOM, check out the main product page. Thanks a lot, and I hope to talk to you again.